Good afternoon. It is Wednesday, August 11th, 2021. My name is Derek Anderson. I am the Executive Director of Northern Westchester Hospital in Mount Kisco, part of Northwell Health. Welcome to our community update on COVID-19 uh, for the Northern Westchester, Putnam, Connecticut market area. Um, we're grateful to be with you. We wanna give you an update and try and answer as many questions as we can related to COVID-19 and what's happening in our communities. Um, I'm joined here today by Dr. Marla Caroli, who is the Chief Medical Officer of the hospital here in Mount Kisco. And so Marla, thank you for joining us today. And update very quickly in the hospital, as of this morning, we only have two admitted positive uh, COVID-19 patients. Uh, we have stayed at this rate for the last uh, several months at this point. Um, the field hospital in front of the hospital, many of you have come to see the large white tent. We call that the field hospital. It was there in preparation in the case um, of the need to open additional hospital beds during the height of both the first and the second wave of this pandemic has officially come down. So the tent is no longer on our campus um, and it is a breath of fresh air to see that tent come down. The hospital remains at a state of readiness uh, and everything is still continuing normal operations. The hospital has been very busy on many fronts, surgical, the emergency department. And one of the messages we'd like to get across today with you is to not delay essential healthcare. So routine screenings, seeing your primary care physician, please continue to seek out healthcare. Uh, and with that, I want to hand off to Dr. Marla Caroli to give us an update on everything COVID-19 happening with the hospital. And Dr. Caroli, if you could also spend a few minutes talking specifically about the Delta variant, if you could. Sure, I will. Thank you very much, Derek. Okay, so you can go to this slide that talks about the community numbers. So as Derek mentioned, currently we have two patients at Northern Westchester Hospital with COVID, but if you look at the time period when the pandemic started in March of 2020, through this month, we have admitted and cared for a total of 1,013 patients at Northern Westchester Hospital for COVID, the majority of whom were discharged and are doing well. Um, we also have been giving monoclonal antibody treatments to patients who are um, symptomatic with COVID, um, but not sick enough to be hospitalized. Um, the data has shown that doing this prevents them from progressing and from needing hospitalization. And to date, since December of 2020, we've treated 1,243 patients from our community with the monoclonal antibody. In addition, we've had several areas where we're providing vaccination to members of our community. Um, and since December, we vaccinated 19,073 patients and are continuing to provide that service. So right now, when we look at Westchester County, there's a positivity rate for COVID of about 2.5%. And the way that's looked at is a seven day average. So they take all the patients that are tested over a period of seven days, and of all those patients, which are more than 5,000 a day that they test, in Westchester County, 2.5% are positive. So that rate is much higher than the last few months in May and June, we were less than 1%. So we are seeing a little uptick around our county. And similarly in New York City, the rate is 2.2%. In Putnam County, 2.7%. In Rockland, 2.7% as well. So all of us are seeing a rise. Um, the vaccination rate in Westchester County full vaccination is 72.6% of people over the age of 12 who can get vaccinated. And for those over age 65, the rate is a bit higher, which is good since that population is more vulnerable. And that rate is 82.2%. Um, and we still would love to see that increase in our county. Um, we're also at Northern Westchester Hospital because of the prevalence being 2.5%. We are testing every single patient that gets admitted to the hospital and every single patient who is undergoing a procedure at the hospital, regardless of whether they have symptoms or have been vaccinated, we are testing them for COVID. And Dr. So, Corelli, if, if I could just add quickly, we'd ask our community to stay connected with us and our website 
as it relates to visitation, as things evolve with this pandemic, just as we have done over the last 18 months, we have our visitors and our patient safety in mind. And so there could be changes to hours of visitation or potentially requiring proof of vaccination to visit someone in the hospital. Not yet, but we'd ask the community, please stay connected on that topic. Yeah, good point. That is what we're working on. So you mentioned the Delta variant, Eric, so I'll talk a little bit about that. And I'm sure people have heard in the news. Um, this virus, unfortunately, keeps changing a little bit, and that's very typical for viruses. It's called mutation. So as we develop immunity against one version, the virus is always trying to be one step ahead and change its form so that it can be more aggressive and fight back. Um, so right now, the Delta variant is the most prevalent variant in the United States. It's responsible for about 75% of cases. There are more variants out there in the world. There's something now in Peru called the Lambda variant, um, and we are expecting to see that probably in the United States as well. Um, we don't have the rate of Delta at Northern Westchester Hospital specifically. We don't test for that specifically. Only um, Department of Health um, New York State laboratories are allowed to test by variant. Um, what we find about the Delta variant is that it is more contagious than the original virus. So even for people that are vaccinated, they can carry high loads of the virus in their nasal cavity. And so it makes it very contagious to other people more quickly than the other variant. In addition, for people that get Delta, the illness is a bit more severe than the original one. The good news is that the vaccines that we've been using, J&J, &J, as well as two doses of Pfizer or Moderna are effective against Delta. They're about 65 to 85% effective against the Delta variant, not as good as their efficacy for the first version of the virus, which was so impressive at 95%, but still 65 to 85% is still good and the best way to protect yourself against the Delta variant. Great. Dr. Crowley, thank you for that. For those looking for vaccine availability, or if you have those in your families or your networks looking for vaccine, um, we do have a location right down the road in Chappaqua Crossing that's in the complex next to Whole Foods um, and the gym in that area uh, down on Bedford Road. Uh, beginning as of next week, um, but appointments are available now. So please go to the website, pause this webinar, um, and, and you can schedule an appointment there. Where do you go for testing? We've been doing testing throughout the pandemic and we continue to do so at our Center for Healthy Living. This is at the same complex down in Chappaqua next to Whole Foods. You see a photo of the storefront there. No prescription needed. Um, appointment not needed if you have a prescription. Otherwise, you um, otherwise you can walk in. Um, and if you don't have a prescription, just we ask you make an appointment at the website below, nwh.northwell.edu forward slash COVID-19. Um, and there is no out-of-pocket expense and it is um, free if you do not have insurance. So please, the finances are not a barrier for, for this. So please get tested and please encourage those around you to get tested if there is a concern. So um, Dr. Corelli, if, if I could just ask you a few questions related to COVID-19, what is on the horizon for the fall with this virus? And what should we be accepti expecting with school and the EUA and other topics? So that's a great question, Derek. So nobody knows for sure, um, but I can tell you, and I could speculate on what I'm hoping for and what I think will probably be happening. I'm thinking three major things that we'll be able to see hopefully in September and October related to the vaccine. So the first is that I'm hoping that our country, the United States and the um, CDC approve giving boosters for the vaccine. A lot of people got, especially the most vulnerable people, people, got the vaccine early on. And there's some evidence that over time, your immunity will fade a little bit and become weaker, putting you a little bit at more risk again to get the virus. So especially with the Delta variant. So I'm hoping 
um, like a couple of other countries have started doing that we will in this country approve giving a booster shot. And I'm, I'm pretty hopeful and confident that that will happen at some point in the fall. The other thing that I think will be important and hopefully again will happen in September or October is that the actual vaccines that have been approved in the United States only under emergency use, use authorization, which is very st strict, that it gets full FDA approval. Um, and I'm imagining that the companies have applied to the FDA for that. And once they have enough data of safety, efficacy, et cetera, and that full approval is granted, I think a lot of people that are hesitant to get the vaccine while it's still only under emergency use authorization will be willing and more comfortable to get it under full approval. So that's the second thing I'm hoping. And the third thing um, is vaccination in children. So there are a lot of studies going on with both the Pfizer vaccine as well as the Moderna vaccine in younger age groups. So right now the vaccine for Pfizer is only approved in people age 12 and above. So I'm hoping that by the fall at some point, the vaccine will be approved at least under emergency use authorization for the age group from five to 12. That's gonna be the next age group. And that will make us feel safer about school um, because the more children Children can be vaccinated and you know we, we agree with many that feel that it's very important for children to have the social interaction the in-person learning interaction as opposed to school being remote um, but the safest way to do that beyond masks is to have more of them vaccinated so that's what i'm hoping will also happen in the fall absolutely great thank you very much for that uh marla dr crowley the the question is often asked of us should I get tested for antibodies with a blood test? And at, at this point, is there value in that? Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't say there's no value. I mean, you can, you know, get your blood test and you can see, do I have antibodies against COVID? And having antibodies could mean that you were exposed to the virus, you had the disease, or that you were vaccinated. Um, it could mean any of those things. The challenge is that because this virus is so new and the vaccines are so new, we can't tell you for certainty at what level of antibody you are fully protected. So just because you have antibodies, it shouldn't give you a false sense of security that, oh, I could be free to do whatever I want, I'm not gonna get it. We just don't know that yet. So while it could give you some information, I, I can't specifically say that it could change what you're gonna do or not do. Great, thank you for that. Uh, can you give us an update on the emergency department at Northern Westchester Hospital? Are, you, are we seeing a lot of COVID? Is the ER busy? Yeah, so the emergency department um, actually was had, had taken a little dip um, during the peak of the pandemic in volume, which was a problematic in some ways in that some people who really needed emergency care, like with acute heart attack or stroke, were not coming in. Um, so that's better in that people are coming. Um, our volume has been quite high. We've been quite busy. Um, you know, we're seeing some people with COVID. We're not seeing a lot that are so sick that they need to be hospitalized. But when we do see them with COVID, um, we you know, are able to offer the monoclonal antibody treatment, and we can do that right in our emergency department if they meet the criteria, or we can just send them home, you know, with, um, you know, Tylenol and usual care for symptoms. So we're seeing a few, but I wouldn't say a huge number of people yet with COVID. Yeah, great. Okay, thank you for that again. Um, at this point, what is our recommendation for social gatherings, and, and what can we recommend to our community to keep themselves more protected as we go into the fall uh, with social gatherings, indoors, outdoors, holidays coming up in a few months. What, it, what is our recommendation as, as the hospital? Yeah, so I have a kind of five general things that I recommend. Maybe you can show the, the slide of a summary, um, but you know, a lot of it hasn't changed. Um, good or bad. Um, right now, I would say the safest way, it, the safest thing that you can do to protect yourself is number one, get the vaccine. That's still the safest and most effective way to prevent COVID. Um, number two is to wear a mask. 
So if you're indoors, especially, I've been wearing a mask the whole time, even though I'm vaccinated. So whether you're vaccinated or not, if you're indoors, the safest way to protect yourself is to wear a mask because remember the vaccine is not 100% effective. Um, third thing, as we've been hearing all along, when you're indoors, especially to socially distance yourself with people who are those that you don't live with, um, keep yourself a distance to keep yourself from transmitting it to one another. And fourth, wash your hands or use hand sanitizer frequently, and that will help prevent the spread as well. So it's still those same four things that are most effective to prevent COVID. And finally, don't delay essential care. So when we talk about essential care, it is like the emergencies that happen, acute heart attack, acute stroke, come, it's safe, you need treatment. Um, the other things that you shouldn't delay are preventive care. So all the good things that medicine can offer in screening and prevention for cancer, um, we should schedule and do because you don't wanna let COVID interfere with the ability to detect, detect cancer or prevent cancer um, in our community. And that's just an example of, you know, one type, a lot of people during the pandemic were delaying mammograms and colonoscopies and other kinds of care. So we very much encourage doing the routine cancer screening that can save lives. Yeah, excellent. Um, and Marley, you talk about hand washing for many, many years in hospitals and healthcare. We've always known that hand washing and good hand sanitizing is the number one way to prevent the spread of infection. And so um, if we can't emphasize anything enough with our community, and thank you for joining us for this quick update, is please continue to be smart around this, especially as we go into the fall and some gatherings go indoors. Um, the guidelines are the same. Let's keep the spread low. Let's keep the hospitalizations low. We thank you for everything that you have been doing to support the hospital and each other in the community during this time. Uh, we are grateful to be providing and serve this community. And should questions or concerns come up, please reach out to us, stay connected uh, through our social media platforms, our newsletter. We are constantly sending out new and updated information related to a lot of topics. Um, and right now to end this, we, we really are also focused a lot on wellness of our community. And um, that's in many different ways and stay connected with us and we'll share some of those ways. But we also hope that during this time, you can stay safe, enjoy time with your loved ones. Um, and with that, Dr. Corelli, thank you for joining us and thank you for doing this today. Uh, thank you for those who have been listening. And that is the update from Northern Westchester Hospital on COVID-19. Yes, thank you, Derek. Take care. <laughs>